A lot of rain came down in the Okanagan and especially here in the South Okanagan. And when rains like that come at times when we're already experiencing the beginnings of freshet, that can lead to flooding. And when we get flooding, residents are always asking us for help with sand and sandbagging. So we have, over the last few days, made sure that all of the communities in the regional district have been informed and have had sand delivered and sandbags. And if you check our website, you'll be able to keep up to date on where those locations are. One of the questions I get most often is, how do you fill a sandbag? Do they come full? Well, sandbags don't come full, and you have to fill them yourself. So we're going to go through a very short demonstration on sandbagging and how there are two techniques to laying sandbags. And again, this information is also on our website. When you go to the location to pick up your sandbags, you're going to see that they're in little sheafs. And we will look at the sheafs now. And you can see that they are tied up. And this little bundle, as small as it may seem, can hold up to 50 sandbags. So 50 sandbags full of sand is going to be awfully heavy. Depending on the dampness of the sand, they can weigh anywhere between 30 and 50 pounds when they're full. So the technique for filling sandbags is quite simple. Always good to have two people. And roll the edge of the sandbag back, leave it open, hold it, and let your partner start filling with sand. It's advisable only to fill the sandbag about two-thirds full. And then you have two options for laying that sandbag down. You either have a tie, which is attached to each one of the sandbags, so you can tie it off, or while you're laying the sandbags out, if the direction of the flow is coming beside you, then you can fold back the edge of the sandbag and not tie it at all, making sure that you place the next sandbag over top of the fold, ensuring that the fold is away from the flow of water. It's always a good idea between layers to stamp on the sandbags. That evens them out and gives you a very good placement. All through the weekend and through the next few weeks while Freshette is moving through, the RDOS will continue to maintain the sandbag locations and piles of sand. We're working with all of the different municipalities within the region and our First Nations partners. Flash floods and flooding can happen at any time of the year. But here in the South Okanagan, we always have a bit of flooding during freshet. And that's the time of the year when the snow melt comes off the mountains and refills and recharges the lakes and the creeks and rivers for the summer. This generally happens in June, but there are years that it can be spanned anywhere from mid-April right through to July. And when we are in an area that is prone to flooding, there are some very important things that we need to keep in mind as residents and property owners. It's always advisable to have a kit in your home that will basically give you the dependency on yourselves for 72 hours. As we've recently found that those that have been isolated by road washouts have been able to stay what we call in place while they wait for the road repair to take effect. And when you have a kit that lasts for 72 hours, one must think about all of the people in the home. How many people, how many pets? So anyone with a compromised immune system or needing medication, it's always good to have an up-to-date list of prescriptions and be able to get them filled when the weather warnings or alerts are issued. On our website, you will be able to find under the flooding tab, some very important tips and information on what to have on hand. These would include good old-fashioned flashlights and batteries. They include having four liters of water per person per day for 72 hours. Also having some in-date canned food and making sure that you have food and areas that are safe for your pets. Again, go to the RDOS website. Lots of very important information and links to how and to put those kits together. And we all need to be cognizant that when it rains hard at this time of year, not to disregard it, but to think about the next day to look around your property and make sure that anything that's in a low-lying area that is removed, a valuable or machinery that may have oils or toxins. And if you have on-property culverts, 
before fresh ed happens is a really good opportunity for you to go in and look at that infrastructure and make sure it's not full of last year's sediment. Make sure that some of the debris that's fallen during the course of the year hasn't worked its way down to that culvert. Keeping culverts clear is a huge benefit to your community, not just for yourself, but your neighbors as well. And in the time of year where flooding or further on in the season when there is threat of fire, it's really appreciated by those of us in the emergency center and in those agencies that you reach out to your neighbors and make sure that they're safe, especially at this time when people may be stranded without the ability to get out for their prescriptions or the elderly or those with mobility issues that aren't able to get their groceries. And if we all do this and we all work together, then these types of occurrences that run through annually run much smoother.